Wow, what China just did yesterday is historic and changes everything. And the White House was even asked about it, and they just kind of blew it off. Eh, we're not really worried about it. But they are worried about it, and they are watching it very closely because this changes everything. Watch. Xi Jinping made history today. The Chinese president landed in Riyadh. A red carpet awaited him. A historic Arab-China summit is to take place. And as the cameras of the world zoomed into Saudi Arabia, it was the United States that was watching most closely, with worry, with fear. America was watching its oil diplomacy fall apart. So, wow, it is happening. More on that major piece of news in a second. But first, another major blow to the US dollar yesterday. Overnight, we learned that the BRICS nations are now expanding. Yes, Egypt has officially joined the BRICS Development Bank. So let's be clear what's happening right in front of our faces. The BRICS nations of Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South Africa are building their own reserve currency built on gold and other commodities like uranium, graphite, copper. The United States dollar is built on debt and the nothing, just like the never-ending story. What is the nothing? It's the emptiness that's left. What is the nothing? Well, Atreyu, the nothing is a failure of Western hegemony, which is built on a house of cards. And now Egypt is applying for full membership in the BRICS alliance, but they're joining the bank piece of this first. And also Turkey, Saudi Arabia, they're both applying for BRICS membership as well, away from the US dollar as a reserve currency. So you can just imagine for a moment, a Russia, Saudi, China, India currency backed by gold? It's game on. Now, BRICS is working to develop its own financial infrastructure, including a joint payment network, with some member states having already switched to trade in local currencies in order to reduce dependence on the US dollar and the euro. The five BRICS economies currently account for more than 40% of the world's population and nearly a quarter of global GDP. So guys, it's happening. And then you wanna layer in Saudi Arabia and Turkey and Egypt, again, this house of cards is falling. So this BRICS news is a huge piece of the story. So why is Saudi Arabia turning its back on the United States? Well, it can be traced back to one event, one big event, the start of the war in Ukraine. OPEC Plus and Saudi Arabia specifically warned the United States not to impose sanctions on Russia. They didn't listen. Europe didn't listen. Instead, they pig-headedly did the opposite and we thought our relationship with Saudi Arabia would continue unabated. We'll just continue to buy your oil, send you weapons, and everything will be okay. Nope, not even close. In fact, this is a failure of the Biden administration of the highest order, and it will hurt America's ability to secure low-cost oil, period. And John Kirby was asked about it, and he said, ah, the Saudis love us. We'll go. We've got nothing to worry about. Clearly, we're better partners than they are. Forget those Chinese and those Russian partners. Who cares? So they're living in a fantasy world at the White House. So let's unpack why this is a game changer for the US power dynamic. Now, President Xi Jinping never leaves his country. He's kind of like me, never leaving my house. He only leaves when he's making big deals to weaken the United States and strengthen China, meeting with Putin to create a new BRICS currency and leave behind the US dollar, or flying to Kazakhstan, which he did. In September, President Xi flew to Kazakhstan to secure a huge oil guarantee for lower cost petroleum for China, and also refined copper for making electronics. And in return, China will send electronics and shoes and manufactured clothing back to Kazakhstan. And now a trip to Saudi Arabia for Xi Jinping to line up massive amounts of oil for China. Now this comes just months after President Joe Biden bumbled his way through the Middle East and vowed in a speech during his visit to Saudi Arabia that the United States would not leave a vacuum in the Middle East to be filled by China, Russia, and Iran. Watch. Tomorrow, I'll also be laying out an affirmative framework for America's engagement in the Middle East to build on these important steps going forward. The bottom line is this trip is about, once again, positioning America in this region for the future. We are not gonna leave a vacuum in the Middle East for Russia or China to fill, and we're getting results. Saudi Arabia has traditionally been one of the US closest partners in the region and relies heavily on American military aid. But now, of course, that's changing right before our eyes. The Saudis even launched jets and chemtrailed the skies with the colors of the Chinese flag. 
They didn't do that for the United States. The Saudis love chemtrails and cloud seeding. What better way to welcome China than with a little rain from our cloud seeding program? So we've seen the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia give the middle finger to the United States over the past few weeks and openly build closer ties with China, its largest trading partner, and with Russia, and with whom it leads the OPEC Plus grouping. Want to know just how bad it is? We've covered this more deeply in our show. I'll put a card here up on the screen up here for you guys to watch where we actually went deeper into the Saudi Crown Prince story ordering the execution of Washington Post reporter Jamal Khashoggi. And President Biden said during the campaign that he would treat Saudi Arabia like a pariah for this killing. We were not going to, in fact, sell more weapons to them. We were going to, in fact, make them pay the price and make them, in fact, the pariah that they are. Well, of course, that didn't happen. Instead, he flew to the Saudi kingdom, gave a fist bump to the prince, and just this week had a judge throw out the case against the prince. So he orders the killing of a journalist, an American journalist, and President Biden steps in and throws it away. So let's get this right. A U.S. journalist targeted for execution by the Saudi government. Biden said he would hold him accountable. Then he has the case thrown out. And the very same day, the Saudis sign a giant oil deal with the Chinese, therefore pushing the United States out of the way. I mean, this is a failure of the highest order for the Biden administration and also for justice. So what did China secure in this partnership with Saudi Arabia? Well, they signed 34 deals over the past 24 hours, including investments in solar panels, green energy, information technology, cloud services, transport, construction, but most notably, oil. It's a $30 billion agreement. So let's get this right. This is all happening when Europe has dropped dependence on Russia's oil and natural gas from 40% down to 9%, while at the same time shutting down nuclear power plants. Are they insane? Well, the answer is yes, and OPEC Plus just announced on Sunday that the production cut of oil is just beginning. Remember the one that they promised us back in October, where they would cut 2 million barrels of oil per day? So China and Russia are securing deals with Saudi Arabia, and Europe and the United States are getting screwed in the process. And as we've been covering, Europe is now paying triple the price to have liquid natural gas processed and shipped from the United States into Europe. Of course, the same with oil. So instead of a freaking pipeline coming directly from Russia, they instead blew it up, natural gas pipeline, and they're going to be putting oil and natural gas on ships and sending it across the ocean, because that makes a lot of sense. And worse, of course, Europe is now restarting its dirty coal-powered plants because it's shut down nuclear plants. They're doing this in UK and Germany. And as our friend Ralph Schulhammer points out, this is pure madness. And the other point is, if you look at Germany at the moment, I mean, this is, oh, it's, if it wouldn't be so sad, it would be hilarious. Uh, currently, while we are talking, uh, Germany's electricity production is one of the dirtiest in the world. It's dirtier than India, it's dirtier than South Africa. They're like number 170 out of 177 nations when it comes to CO2 emissions uh, per, per kilowatt hour produced. Because there is not a lot of wind and not a lot of sun at the moment. So where do they get electricity from? They get it from burning coal and they get it from burning gas, which is, of course, significantly more CO2 intensive. And they still insist on saying, no, no we're going to close down nuclear. It makes no difference. And Putin could deal the death blow to Europe if he stops sending uranium. The U.S. produces no uranium right now, zero. And Europe is starting to see how important nuclear power is. But if Putin shuts down their supply of uranium, then we're truly in the dark ages. But the precious minerals piece of this story is just as important because many of the minerals needed for nuclear energy come from China and Russia. In the United States, we have a shortage of these minerals to build nuclear reactors. So China will help provide these precious minerals to Saudi Arabia. And we are scrambling at home to try to get them out of the ground. So we will be watching this story very closely because it's incredibly important. So that's the news update part of this show. Now I want to tell you about today's sponsor for this video, which is tied directly to what we're talking about in Saudi Arabia. The company is called Infinity Stone, sort of like, uh, yes, sort of like the Infinity Stones from Marvel, but Infinity Stone, and their stock ticker is GEMS, G-E-M-S, and for good reason. They are the only one of these companies right now pulling graphite out of the ground in North America. You can check them out wherever you buy stocks, their stock is trading at 24 cents a share as of this video. Now, as you know, I've been heavily investing in these minerals producers in North America because I see where the puck is going. You know, if we currently are relying on all of these minerals from Russia and China, 
that's not sustainable. If we want to build new nuclear reactors or replace parts for the cores of our nuclear reactors, we need graphite in order to do that. We need uranium enriched. We can't continue to rely on countries that we're trying to go to war with. I mean, the US and NATO are actively bombing targets inside of Russia as we are speaking. And as we've been covering this on the show, in fact, overnight, Vladimir Putin just issued a warning that he will defend his territory by any means necessary. We are slow walking into nuclear Armageddon with Russia. And the United States is provoking China in the South China Sea with warships. But we're all going to get our most crucial minerals from those countries? No, we're not. So this company, Infinity Stone, is a North American producer of some of the critical minerals, including graphite and lithium for battery technology. Again, the graphite piece of this is vitally important for our nuclear infrastructure. Graphite is used in pencils and lubricants, crucibles, foundry facings, polishes, arc lamps, batteries, brushes for electric motors, and yes, the cores of nuclear reactors. It's mined extensively in China, in India, Brazil, and North Korea. Of course, all members of the BRICS nations, except North Korea. But I don't think we're going to be doing any trading with North Korea anytime soon. So the company Infinity Stone just discovered a massive graphite deposit in North America, which is a huge catalyst for this stock. And of course, hard assets are likely to be one of the only performing assets in 2023. We've got a market that is bottoming right now. I mean, have you seen the market over the past 48 hours? So in my opinion, mining and natural resources are going to be a vital play in my investing portfolio over the next few years. And investing in North American producers of oil and minerals and energy all of the things that for a couple of years now, this sort of green revolution and sort of pushing us away from this stuff. Now we're starting to see the light and realizing, no, no, we need to go back to it in a big, big way. So if you dive into the data on this company, I'll put their stock ticker up here again on the screen so you can learn more about them. Infinity Stone has a solid pipeline of catalysts for growth and multiple active exploration projects and a track record of news flow over the past year. The company's exploration projects are at the core of their growth right now, and they're fueling a resurgence in North American and American manufacturing and supply chain, including recent discoveries of massive graphite deposits. So we can move away from China for this vital mineral for our nuclear reactors. Do you know that one in five American homes is powered by nuclear energy? I mean, they don't want you to know this, actually. Like, they really don't. They also don't want you to know that 50% of that energy comes directly from Russia. That's right, 50% of all nuclear power in the United States comes from the enrichment of uranium from Russia. It only takes a few tons of uranium to fuel an entire city. So a supply that actually can be mined in just a few days. On top of that, nuclear energy produces zero carbon dioxide emissions. We are having a major resurgence and a move back to nuclear. And the minerals that are used to build those reactors come from our economic enemies right now in Russia and China. It's insane when you think about it. And if you want to build a nuclear power plant, you'll likely be buying it from either Russia or China. They have us by the balls. And it's not their fault. It's our fault. 27 of the 31 reactors that were built in the last five years are either Russian or Chinese. Now the U.S. is scrambling to get new reactors online. And they're trying to buy them from South Korea, but they don't have the capacity to help us. So we need these minerals ASAP to do it ourselves. Again, this is why I'm so bullish on these mining companies that are actively pulling these minerals out of the ground. I will have links to the company Infinity Stone in the description below. You can read more about it, do your own due diligence on it. Again, their stock ticker is GEMS, G-E-M-S. This is a junior producer stock, so you'll need to use one of their larger brokerages like E-Trade to buy this stock if you're interested in picking up a few shares. E-Trade is the one that I use for a lot of my mining stocks that I own. So check them out. Again, links to them are in the description below, and we will see you again next time.